you know, today we're on practice 12. Um, really like where this team's going right now. I thought, you know, after going through the scrimmage on Saturday, I thought the defense, it was a pretty lopsided scrimmage where the defense dominated the whole time. But today, the offense came out there and responded. Um, a lot to do with of cutting down the depth charts after the, the Saturday scrimmage where we're kind of getting into, you know, majority of these competition battles out there uh, kind of solidified up. You look at our quarterback situation today, we had Tyler Vick go with the ones and Gresh Jensen because we're, we're putting together a pretty healthy competition between those two guys. Those are the two guys that we're moving forward with right now um, and kind of let them kind of duke this thing out over the next week and a half. But really pleased with those two. Um, I think they both responded to it because they both had drives where they led the one offense down there for touchdowns. So um, overall, really like where the competitive side of this was today pretty even. Um, and that's as a head coach, you walk out of it uh, feeling pretty good when you're playing complimentary football. But, uh, you know, they're running around out there. We got two more days of fall camp and then we start our mock week. But it was good. We had Lil Wacker out there today um, coming and observing practice. So she gave me a lot of advice afterwards of, of everything. So it was, pre it was pretty neat having her around. But any questions? Yeah, and Jalen's such an awesome person, um, you know, and he's what we want at this school from just a cultural standpoint and just the maturity that he brings. You know, he was very optimistic about it. He understood, uh, you know, he, his arms are a little sore from some things that he's working through, and uh, he understood that we're going to move forward with these two, and, and he's still one snap away from being the guy, you know, to, to be in the mix as the backup. And, the thing about him is, is you might see him start to, to move around in uh, other positions. Um, that was something that he kind of addressed to me. Uh, you know, don't hesitate to, to play me at other positions, coach. And that kind of shows you the selfless nature of the kid. So, you know, as a coach, you're like, you still love where he was going. I think he's got a ton of arm talent, and he's a very athletic quarterback. So we're going to still have a plan in place for him to develop a little bit, get some snaps at quarterback to make sure that he's – He's repping uh, and still comfortable with quarterback play, but we're going to start messing around and moving him around at different positions because he's such a, a natural, gifted talent. So um, handle it really well. You know, those are the types of kids that you love coaching because they have a chip on their shoulder and they, they understand it's a competition, but they're not going to give up on themselves and they're going to bring it again. And he had great body language today. And, you know, I know he was itching to get out there, but, you know, we're going to eventually find a role for Jalen. I don't know. I think he's a really good talent now. He. He can run, he's athletic, he's big enough to play some of those more physical spots. So, you know, it, it's going to be fun to see where, where, we're, where we can put him. You know, like I kind of used the analogy of the Braxton Miller type deal of what like the Ohio State was doing where he was at H-back and move him in the backfield and move him out and kind of all over the place. You know, I haven't really thought about him on defense. If I brought that up to the defense, they'd probably try to steal him over to that side. So uh, I, let, let's keep him on the offense right now. <laughs> so. <laughs> did yeah and you know if you, if you looked you know it was Anthony Taylor and Kayla Twyford they got the majority of the snaps out there um, but you know we have a good competition kind of with the Robert Brown and Jalen Nelson too so I feel really good with the running back spots um, you know but the majority of those reps are going to AT and uh, Twyford if you uh, look at the O-line it was pretty solid group right there with the starters I thought that the continuity that we've talked about building, like you could see that today with the one offense. Um, two still got a long ways to go, but that's what we're trying to get to right now is make sure that the guys that we believe are going to be the starters, majority of them, are going to be the ones repping with the team. And uh, I like just seeing Haydell out there and Mason Hayes making plays, and you know, it, uh, it it's pleasing to me just to to see that the quarterbacks are starting to get comfortable with who who's out there and, and understanding what these kids are good at and what scenarios to throw them the ball in. You know, that's that's the hardest part of keeping an open competition, but still, you know, teaching these quarterbacks in certain scenarios what these kids can't and can't do. You know, that's a, that's a lot going down to the matchup side of things because this is a matchup game. So when they're having a lot of reps with these guys, they understand that, Maybe Mason isn't the best, you know, vertical guy, but he's really good at the underneath stuff. So if you're in that situation, I might want to lean to here. Or Haydell's our more explosive guy in man situations. Let's try to get here. So those are the things we're trying to build of, you know, now, now it's actually like you're in your backyard and you're finding the matchup and like this is the guy I got to get the ball to and what do they do good at. So 
and that's what these next few days are for, and I think we're getting there right now. Yeah, like, honestly, I haven't even looked that far ahead. We know we got Texas A&M the first game of the season, but <laughs> we're still trying to just get right, get us right. And, um, you know, you, you do look at the defensively, you look at the offenses that you're going to face throughout the course where, you know, a and is going to be a heavier set team. Wyoming's going to be a heavier set team. SMU runs a lot of gap scheme and up-tempo and, and 11 personnel stuff that's a little similar to us, but you don't see the type of runs that they do. So. You've got to do a good job at sprinkling that stuff in throughout the course of practice. And if you saw the day we did a scout exchange period where the defense is at least getting looks at the other opponent, you know, and then getting out there and just trying to fly around at a game speed to just see who's going to separate themselves. So it, it, that is probably one of the hardest things to manage. And that's why I've always gone back to what we've done with Dana Holgerson and Kevin Sumlin and Sonny Dykes, you know, because those are always the discussions. You know, the other one, the other main discussions is, is how much do you tackle in fall camp? <laughs> you know, and uh, right now that was our last tackle practice. Now we got to start getting healthy, be in control practices, and make sure that we're still getting better, but taking care of each other. Yeah, and that goes down to the 25 seniors. You know, I, I think that these seniors, like I've said before, have gone through so much around here that I think they're starting to realize that fall camp's almost over, their last fall camp, and it's time to get this thing going and make sure that, that this is the team and the product that they want to put out there. So, again, it goes down to focusing on us, but you got to take that senior leadership on where we're going to go as a team. So, uh, you know, they're bought into it, I believe. You know, I think they're, you know, listening to the cultural standpoint. I think they're going to have an understanding of the schemes. Uh, it really goes down to playing together and making sure that we're not doing um, dumb mistakes to hurt us in the game. Being a, a local guy, you're going to be presenting at, at Kevin today. Um, of course, what, Austin, what have you, Kevin. What have you seen from him <laughs> you know, in, in terms of his, his first year here? And I guess some on field studies. Yeah, Tevin brings a, a mentality that a lot of coaches don't have. He is He's very hard on these kids, but they can. Be, he's still approachable in so many ways. And I think that's. Uh, kind of the value of a great coach is a guy that can get the best out of them and still have the respect for them to come off the field and, and just kind of have that player coach relationship. You know, it's uh, that's difficult to do in today's time, you know, and uh, I've, I've seen a lot of uh, guys over the years that don't have that relationship and they typically phase out. And, you know, Tevin brings just such a unique energy that we have. And, uh, you know, he's the biggest guy out there on the field, so he has an intimidating uh, factor to himself. But, you know, I couldn't be more happy for him and where we're at and, and how he's doing. He's just not just doing great on the field, but he's also a great recruiter and does a lot of great things for this university. So I'm very pleased with uh, where that defensive side of the ball is going, especially with Tevin. Yeah, it's it's more about being yourself. You know, I, I don't want him to be anybody he's not, you know, and that's the, the advice that I got from all the the previous head coaches I worked for is that, you know, you can't be somebody you're not. And I think Tevin brings his own spin to the whole thing. And and uh, and I know at times that he works through it as well. Like I'm working through being a first time head coach. I know there's going to be scenarios and situations he's thrown in. Uh, that he works through, but at the end of the day, he's got to put the touch on it that makes him genuine and not somebody he's not. Did you know of Tevin, or did Zach have to tell you about him and convince you, hey, you need this guy, and he, he can do it, he's got this type of mentality? Yeah, I, I knew about Tevin uh, just through dialogue with Cliff Kingsbury and my brother. And uh, when I got this opportunity and I hired Zach, it, it was a really a no-brainer for Zach. I think Zach uh, wanted to kind of keep him on the ropes a little bit and didn't want to tell him, but we had a discussion uh, pretty early that Tevin was going to be the guy there. But you know how defensive coaches are. They got to like make it suspenseful and everything. So they, they let they let that happen for uh, for Tevin uh, for a while. But you know, I the discussions early when I hired Bob and Zach, Tevin was already in the mix with it and we were moving on to other guys. So um, I was comfortable with it and you know, it's my brother, <laughs> if, if he, puts his neck out on the line for it, I'm probably going to trust him on, on that decision. And, and Cliff Kingsbury had nothing but great things to say about him. And, 
And uh, just I've, I've kind of followed his career through when he was playing and all the way through his time at Texas Tech. So, um, you know, the people that I trust most in this profession are the ones that uh, gave the most glowing recommendations. Uh, a little bit. I saw that today. You know, they, they understand they got two more controlled practices of work days, and then we got to get into the mock week because we got to start getting healthy. We got to start t teaching these guys how we do practice, you know, and uh, I think that's always a, an interesting thing. You know, it's just uh, when you got to cut it off and when you got to transition into, you know, into the game weeks. And I think what we've done over the summer and through spring ball and fall camp up to now, we, we've maximized a lot of, of these kids right now. And now it's time to get two more work days in and let's, let's flip the script and, and start uh, preparing for our future opponents and making sure that we're, we're recovering right and making sure that we are putting our kids in the right situation and we're ready to roll. Because uh, as you guys know, we, you know, depth is always an issue with us, you know, and you got to keep these guys healthy, but at the same time, you got to make sure that they're continuing to get better.